2021, an act relative to extending certain COVID-19 measures adopted during the state of emergency signed into law on June 16th, 2021. This meeting will be conducted via remote participation. No in-person attendance by members of the public will be permitted. People who wish to watch or participate in the meeting may do so by finding the meeting at www.southboroughtown.com slash remote meetings. First item on the agenda is a discussion item, which is a master plan committee update. Thank you, Mrs. Mr. Luttrell. Chairman. Mrs. Luttrell. Um, the master plan committee met on uh, December 8th and we um, reviewed in depth the drafts of uh, the open space, natural resources and recreation chapter, circulation and transportation and housing. Um, our next meeting is January 12th where we're going, uh, our homework for that meeting is the, are the economic development community historic and cultural resources, land use and zoning in the um, vision chapter. Um, and then after that, we'll only have two chapters left, the public facilities in schools. Um, so prior to our next planning board meeting, I'll upload all those draft chapters um, on the planning board Dropbox. And we, uh, two meetings ago, started working on the implementation plan. So I'll upload that too. So everyone can see it and feel free to offer any comments. Thank you. Wonderful. Any questions or comments? You won't know what to do with yourself, Mimi, after the next two chapters. Okay. I'll find something. Oh, that we know. Uh, next item on the agenda, well, at 7.05. Um, Don, I, I could point out, I don't know if you want to do it individually, but um, Andrew Mills um, filed Mullins forms for the public hearings that he missed on November 15th. And that was for 325 Turnpike, 200 Turnpike and one Pine Hill Drive. Okay, it's now on the record that you have done that, mm -hmm. Mr. Mills. Yes. So the next item on the agenda is a continued public hearing, 325 Turnpike Road, Ken's Foods expansion, major site plan approval. This hearing is continued from September 27th, October 18th, November 15th, and also Continued public hearing for 325 Turnpike Road, Ken's Foods expansion, special permit for lower impact development. Also continued from September 27th, October 18th, and November 15th. Um, this has become one of the most complex uh, public hearings that we've had in a while. Um, we'll ask the town planner to start us off. Who from Ken's is on board? We have Jim Bourne in the attendees. Um, we should have uh, Scott Doty at the bottom and um, yep. attorney William Pizzoni. Yep. Okay. Uh, Karina, let's uh, start off by uh, you updating us and the public on um, what's happened since we last uh, were in the hearing. Sure. So um, at the last hearing, um, there was an extension request granted to continue the public hearings for the ma uh, major site plan and LID um, to this evening, December 13th. Uh, 2021 planning board meeting, as well as extend the planning board's action deadline to December 17th, typically the four days after the continued hearing in case there's um, a need to have a little, few extra days. Um, Conservation Commission met, um, I believe on uh, November 28th 
Uh, they were continued um, to this last Thursday. Uh, on November 30th, I received um, a complete submission number two for the project. Plans dated November 22nd, 2021, and a stormwater report dated 11-23-21. Uh, the submission was filed with Preston O'Neill on the 6th of December. Um, I sent the submission to the planning board and the town departments at the same time. I received uh, comments back from um, the police chief, Ken Paulos, regarding um, uh, a question on the noise issue. And then I also received um, some comments from the Board of Health regarding the septic um, system and any impacts that this current project might have on the system. Um, on December 9th, the Conservation Commission met again and had their public hearings um, for notice of intent and stormwater management permit continued. Um, I failed to mention back um, in November 15th, right after the public hearing, um, I received an e email from attorney uh, William Pizzoni addressing um, various issues, uh, clarifications from the prior public hearing and questions. I also received an email from um, a butter, uh, Debbie DeMoria from 58 Flag Road on November 22nd um, in regards to um, the permit and uh, requesting that the board deny the permit. Then um, I also received an email from Attorney Pizzoni on December 9th um, responding to, um, I believe that email from um, Ms. DeMoria, the abutter. Um, I'm awaiting Fuss and O'Neill review comments um, probably later this week, uh, later than sooner, but before the end of the week which I'll forward to the applicant team as soon as it comes in. Um, and that brings us to um, tonight's meeting. I just wanna make you aware there is um, a extension request form ready if the applicant so requests um, to extend, to continue the meeting to January 10th, 2022, uh, which is the next scheduled planning board meeting should we need to continue and also extend the action deadline to January 28th um, for the planning board to um, have time to act on the application because the deadline right now is December 17th. And that brings us um, up to date. That's it, Don. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Um, we need to know this for uh, scheduling purposes tonight. Is it uh, Ken's intention to uh, request an extension of the approval period tonight? Uh, yeah, I mean, after we have you know, some discussion tonight, we'll be happy to extend that. We know that you don't have Fuss and O'Neill's comments yet, and we're gonna have to extend. Uh, we're still wrapping things up with conservation. We understand that, but we would like to at least have an opportunity tonight to have some discussion with you. Very good, I'll turn it over to Unless there's any objection from the board, I'll turn it over to Ken's, whoever's going to uh, speak um, right now. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Scott Doty from uh, John Crow Associates. Um, also with us is Jim Bourne from uh, Ken Foods, also at the hearing tonight. Um, I'd like to go through uh, briefly and summarize um, uh, the items that uh, have been modified or addressed on the plans um, in a general fashion. I know you're getting more, you'll get specific uh, um, information from, from Fuss and O'Neill. But, um, and the plans uh, submitted uh, in late October and then and resubmitted again in, in November, uh, uh, we have been able to incorporate um, two major LID factors into uh, the uh, practices into this, the project plans, one being a, and I'm going to share a, a screen if I could, um, project plans, nothing uh, new. Um, oh, you should be all set to yeah. share. Oh, th thank you. Yeah. Okay. So I just okay this and then do try it again. Yep. Thank you. You're welcome. 
And I guess I got to hit two buttons. There we go. There we go. Okay, thank you. Um, this is the uh, this is a part of the of the site plan set. This is the construction site plan. But two elements have been incorporated into the site to reduce stormwater volume and uh, and to uh, improve the uh, environmental aspects of the site. One of them is a level spreader drainage uh, uh, structure, which is south of the building expansion, which is here. This is the main existing building, um, uh, Route uh, 9 east and west is, is on the bottom of the sheet and north is to the top of this sheet, just to orient you. Um, also incorporated into is the emergency driveway that needed to be reloc relocated around the, um, around the addition will be, and as will the pavements coming from the emergency egress doors from the building be made out of porous um, asphalt uh, pavement, um, which will then mimic, allow the rainfall to mimic the natural, um, uh, the, the natural uh, course of uh, drainage infiltrating into, into soil, uh, stormwater that is. We've also um, uh, in, included a new up-to-date, uh, what we call an operations Inspection and, man and maintenance plan. That's to so we could bring together both the requirements for the conservation commission and the planning board into one document. That uh, uh, for Ken's Foods. Um, so that's been incorporated to that's been modified to incorporate in the new BMPs and uh, low, lower uh, uh, impact development practices. Um, the. Uh, also, with the, I want to go back to that uh, set of plans. Um, uh, part of the uh, changes that have been made uh, has been the uh, in the uh, creation of a abravite planting near the uh, island at the west side of the site between the truck yard area and Route 9 um, that to uh, mitigate or compensate for the loss of the Abravite uh, line that's uh, going to be relocated, it's going to be dislocated by the, by the expansion. Um, another element that uh, uh, we've been able to uh, catch up on is the uh, is the earthwork estimate for the project site now that the foundation system has been determined to be a shallow uh, impact in terms of excavation on the site um, and they're going to be basically a stone piling type of system that the building's going to be built upon allowed us to uh, focus in and refine the uh, uh, the earthwork estimate that's been provided. Um, Fuster O'Neill is reviewing that. You can see from this image here that um, uh, there's a bit of uh, quite a bit of fill around uh, to support the new the new um, uh, slab on grade and a little bit of cut here and there. Some of the uh, mounds that are uh, where they're going to be displaced by the building and also a little bit of excavation. But for the most part. The project is going to be um, a fill project. The um, we have a um, refine we've we've offered a, the refined list of waivers um, for the project, including um, the uh, uh, parking or renewal of the parking waiver for. Uh, 81 spaces on the site serve uh, the building uh, with no need to increase the parking with the option if the planning board uh, wants to. The consultant uh, may have mistook uh, the uh, nine parking spaces that were for, well, not really truck cab spaces as parking spaces, uh, but uh, we'd welcome even either the modification to retain the 81 or make that number 90 if those parking spaces should count as, uh, as vehicular pit spaces, though they are really set up for cabs, uh, trailer cabs and uh, with um, block heaters and such. Scott, can you just point to those on the screen? Sure. The nine spaces? 
Yeah, let me go to the overall overall site, sure. This is the overall site and uh, the spaces we're talking about are on the west edge right here. And I'll zoom in on them, uh, Karina, uh, Karina. Let me zoom in. Oh, wrong way, wrong button. Just one more, I think it'd be good. These are nine, uh, I guess we'd call them oversized uh, spaces here. They are set up for uh, cabs without trailers. Let me go in a little bit more and see it a bit better. Uh, these spaces right here. Um, are the spaces I think that uh, the Fuss and O'Neill reviewer might have been thinking are parking spaces. Uh, you can see they're a bit different than the 20 or 21 that are here that are, are in place for the, uh, for the uh, uh, truck drivers and uh, as such. So those are the spaces there. Did you, is, do you have another question on that, Karina? Are you good? Oh, no, that's good. I just wasn't sure where that was. Yeah, Thank you. yeah. Understood, understood. Um, another uh, aspect that has changed that I brought up last time that we were, uh, we met was that we did an uh, overall as-built for the entire site, uh, an as-built survey. And in fact, it's been incorporated as the existing conditions on this set of plans. In review of that, we discovered that there was a control outlet um, uh, problem with the control outlet. It's here. This is the driveway down to Route 9. Route 9 is off of this little snippet. Uh, this is the southwest corner of the building. This is the south lawn area right here, uh, the west truck dock up here. But this is zoomed in to focus in on these construction, uh, on these control um, outlet devices. Um, this outlet device, the one in place that was part of the prior project, was constructed um, at the wrong elevation. And the solution that we've come up with that uh, Fuss and Neil is reviewing now is the uh, in, to put in place two new control structures near the two underground uh, detention systems. This is the underground detention system right here associated with underneath the uh, South Lawn area, south of the building. There's another one that's uh, just getting the south edge of it here, but it's underneath the truck yard and loading yard. And so this is the second control structure. They'll utilize the pipes in place that um, would then go to the ordinary course to the, uh, the ordinary outfall that was uh, in, been in place for decades. Another aspect that was discovered in the um, uh, as-built was uh, some of the pipes were not at the right slopes and right elevations. And we've provided a, a outline of a um, a condition for the board to consider um, that would allow for a value, an in-depth evaluation of those pipes once these systems are operating, built and operating correctly. Associated with the condition and proposed condition for the outlet control structures is to is a requirement to have these built as soon as possible to get the existing conditions in place properly so the rest of the drainage system pipes can be. Uh, can be assessed with a, with a proper um, operating system. Um, that and besides the um, uh, the stormwater um, system has been uh, total, uh, totally totally uh, you know rerun the hydrology and that and Fuss and Neil's evaluating that also. That's been in that submittal package. But that, those are the items briefly. Um, be happy to go into any more, deta more detail on any of them. But I thought that the planning board would like to have a sort of a general overview of um, where those items are. Related to some of, the, some of the Conservation Commission business with some of it sort of uh, 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 
is also uh, in play with uh, the same kind of permanent aspects as the LID, that being environmental protection and protection of water resources as such. Um, we have proposed conditions to the um, Conservation Commission for closure of the prior their prior permits associated with uh, the remedial work on these control outlet structures and the remedial work, of course, on the plantings um, that are associated with their orders of conditions. Just because uh, I know that those issues of plantings have, have been discussed by the planning board uh, members and the town planner also. That's, those are the items briefly. Scott, uh, if, if you, Scott, if you could, Mr. Chairman, like, just, uh, uh, you, I mean, you reiterated the things that we found and we're gonna be correcting that weren't part of the original site plan submittal and that they're being completed based on the prior site plan to make sure it was done correctly. Uh, can you just run around, run over uh, the addition that's being put on and the changes that are taking place in that area? Because there are no other changes taking place on the site relative to circulation or, or you know, access or anything like that. Certainly. Um. Let's see here. Do, do you see my plan screen? I know. We see your desktop. Yep. Okay. You saw my desktop. Okay. Thank you. Let me get this. Uh, let me nice go to you. All right. Screen two. There we go. Um, the um, we'll go to the uh, uh, construction plan. And again, I have to go back out and zoom out here. You have to give a sort of summary and um, uh, I know because it's been a, a number of weeks since we went over it. Uh, this is the uh, building proper here, the existing building. And the addition is, um, uh, of course, the southeast corner, 62,500 square foot addition. I know this is a reiteration for some of you. And so uh, the, the project entails the, constru the construction uh, going out, pushing out the portion of this eastern wall out uh, to uh, for the expansion. There's an existing emergency driveway that runs on the east side of the building. It needs to be relocated as long as, as along with the uh, water uh, fire protection water system in that area. Um, the roof drainage we talked about this portion of it goes to these to level spreaders here at the that take advantage of the large um, a grassed area for uh, infiltration and um, and uh, treatment prior to it reaching groundwater or surface water for that matter. But the majority of the roof is collected and connected to an expansion of the existing underground detention infiltration system in the area south of the building. Um, uh, with with the exception of some other that that's pretty that's pretty much the project. With, there's some additional planting as can be seen on the planting plan for in the front on the south side of the building, um, and of course the proposal and as conditions is to replace and replant as needed the uh, bioretention area uh, that's up here in the northeast corner of the uh, project near the existing parking parking lot. Um, the parking lot has a little bit of work associated with it. Relocation of four spaces are necessary, uh, but we're not increasing uh, the number of spaces there. No need to because the number of employees is staying the same. Um, it, in fact, there's a small reduction in pavement um, in this area with this reconfiguration. Um, the project also in, involves the uh, go to the planting here. Plan. Excuse me if my 
computer's moving a little too slow. Sorry if I seem a little bit out of it. I am also not feeling not very not well right now. Um, the um, oh, this is the uh, seven and erosion control plant. Excuse me. There we go. This is a planting plant. So plan, the plan still involves the uh, will incorporate the uh, relocation and slight enlargement of the wildflower um, uh, mix area, which would be a wet wildflower mix in this area. Uh, since it's closer to the wetland uh, now, that's a requirement that we uh, committed to uh, during the modification a few years ba back. But uh, the seed mix there is that which is going to be required by the uh, uh, Preservation Open Space Preservation Commission. Um, these are the Abervitae I, I talked about earlier. And uh, this is the area, of course, where plantings will need to be redone. There are some dead plants there. There are some that uh, are just are surviving. There are others that are doing quite well, actually. So that area be reconstructed in accordance with the original uh, order of conditions plan, which was reflected on the LID plan, the original LID plan also. Um, the construct during the construction period, which is, of course, also important. Uh, we've we've provided uh, the contractor with a set of tools um, to protect the wetlands and uh, the water resources to the east, including uh, areas potentially for dewater dewatering, uh, temporary dewatering facility if necessary here, pond, berming, and another a sediment capture uh, uh, swale if necessary. Frankly, we design these aspects into the project when we thought perhaps we'd have a more extensive excavation program with traditional foundations and footings. And um, that's no longer the case. It's going to be a shallow um, excavation and um, uh, uh, a stone piling uh, system, tap system that the building is going to be built upon. So there's not going to be a need for major excavation. Um, besides removal of topsoil and um, in, in this area. That's it. Um, again, I'm uh, happy to answer any questions. I hope I wasn't just talking to myself. <laughs> I could do that for a while. Thank you, Mr. Mr. Chairman. Chairman. Uh, Bill, please. Thank, thank you. And uh, I understand that uh, Freddie from uh, the uh, Open Space uh, did send an email today to Karina, and, and I swear she'll get a draft out to us after her last site walk. Uh, and, I, and I believe she said there may be some tweaks that really shouldn't impact the uh, applicant that much. Uh, you know, so once we see that, we will attempt to incorporate that into the plan as well uh, in trying to uh, facilitate and handle the things that she would like as well. Uh, other than that, uh, you know, the police chief made a, had filed a response relative to the fact that he really hadn't heard any uh, issues relative to sound. I mean, you guys have the email. You can look at it. Uh, other than those originally back in 2019 and 20. And he had thought all that of those issues had resolved as well. Uh, I don't want to reiterate everything I put in my letter on my prior memo. Uh, I think it, you, you're all well capable of reading that. And I guess it would be best if we just turn it over to you for any questions you may have as a board at this point uh, to help point us in the right direction uh, so that we can prepare once we get Fuss and Honeyham's comments as well. Thank you. Very good. Thank you. Thank you for the update. Uh, uh, engineering wise and uh, administratively. So um, we're, we're waiting for 
the uh, report back from Fuss and O'Neill. Um, and uh, we're also anticipating at some point in the near future a uh, resolution from the Conservation Commission. Um, there was one thing in the Conservation Commission um, notes that we've seen uh, as a potential uh, showstopper, which is the um, permission to uh, do work in the uh, riverfront uh, zone. So we'll be watching that. I have one question and then I'll open it up to the board. Is it Ken's position based on previous permits and the status that we're in right now, is it Ken's position that the truck loading area, which as I understand it, all of the trailers are now outside is it Ken's position that those do not have to be covered? Uh, yes. Uh, you mean all the trucks that are parked out there or up against the loading docks? Because up on the loading docks, there's a 10 foot overhang that if uh, you might remember, Mr. Morris, because you were on the board back then when we went through the, the prior plans, that the issue out in back was the fact that one of those loading docks out back there was flush and the neighbors could hear the noise of, you know, things clanging, doors clanging, trucks backing up, people loading, you know, the everything. And what we did was we committed to put that overhang and then tuck them back in uh, on the front side to accommodate that. And at that point, it was looked at by your board, as well as the uh, building inspector, that they had complied with the regulation at the time, which hasn't changed since then. So yes, it's Ken's position that those have been constructed properly. And the fact that we are parking trucks out in, in the driveway, that most of that's interstate commerce. So that's federally under federal control. Any truck that pulls in there and circulates and fills up and leaves, once it's moving, it's, it's under federal control. I'll open it up to the board. Um, Mrs. Luttrell. That was unexpected. Um, on the plans, could you show me where um, bay doors B, C, D, and E are? Um, let's see, am I muted? No, I'm not. Okay, good. I don't think those um, exist anymore. Yeah. The, uh, There's only sure. the one bank of bays on that west wall. That was the idea. We would eliminate all the other bays originally and move them all to that west side. And that would be where we would have all the bays. Shared share the wrong screen, sorry. Got the site plan there, do you? Yeah. Okay, great. Um, I, 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 don't, I, I heard a part of, of uh, uh, Attorney Pozzoni's answer I only know the, the you know one through twenty six here. Um, I don't know if this area was called A and this area was called B or C. I'm sorry. Did do you need me to illustrate anything here, Bill? Uh, I can just point it out that there used to be a bay on the uh, and Jim, correct me if I'm wrong, on the uh, northwest corner up on the top up there. Up, a bay up, there. up here. Yeah, there was a small then, bay over here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. One of and these, then yeah. in the back further along the back wall, there were several bays built in there as well. That was actually, right here. If you can see my cursor, that's it was right here. Correct. Yeah, and actually one more a little further down. Yeah, there might have been something in this area here. Yeah. Correct. Of course, that area, those were closed, and this is all now uh, 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 vegetated uh, grass area. So what, what were those referred to? What, 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 what were, what were so in the, in the um, 2014 special permit, yeah. 
the bays were referred to as B, C, D, E, and F. And yeah, that, that, that was because they were scattered all around the building. So we had to label them so people could identify which ones were which. I couldn't tell you which ones were A, B, C, and D now, unless I look back on an old plan. But they all used to be along that north side in the northwest corner with several where they are located now. We just relocated all of them to where they are in that Bay Area now. Yeah. Do you have a copy of the plan referred to in that decision? Oh, we, we, we have that, yes. Yeah, we, Could I we get a get copy that. of that? Yeah, we can get that to you. It's not before the board right now, but uh, you're welcome to have it. And it actually should be a copy of it in your, your file at the town. But uh, Scott, you can get that to her, correct? Yes. I mean, if, if you people had patience, I could call it up now, but um, I, 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 it would take me a minute or two to get to it. I could do it while we're discussing other things, if you'd like. Okay. All right. Um, so in just, I'm trying to untangle all these permits and site plans and everything to figure out where we are and uh, where we're going, which is why I ask, because it referred to these by alphabetically and I have no idea what they're talking about. Um, so as far as the noise, um, although the police chief said that he thinks it's been resolved, it hasn't been resolved. I think the neighbors just got tired of complaining and, you know, nothing was happening. So, um, when you receive this special permit from the ZBA in uh, this spring, uh, it was stated that you would continue to take steps um, to address the noise issues. Um, could you outline the steps that you've taken since March of 2021 to address those yeah, issues? Uh, I submitted a memo to you back in early November, which outlined the history of what's gone on at that site, but I'll recap it real quickly for you. I don't want, I just we, want since March of 2021, what steps have been taken? March of 2021, we met out at the site with uh, Deb, with building inspector, then met out at the site again. I, I believe Deb was at that first one. Uh, then we met with the chairman of the board of the ZBA, another member of the board of the ZBA, and the, uh, I think the sound experts were there as well. And we walked around, that was in, in July, yeah, in July after the hearing. Uh, we looked at, looked at the facility, no, that was in June. Then they approved it. We went out to, we went out to the site with Deb's expert, with our expert, and walked the site even actually went up to her property as well, uh, determined and agreed that it was not, we didn't believe it was the refrigeration units, which is what they had already always thought it was. And he, we agreed to provide her expert with all the data he wanted so that he could take a look at it and then come back to us with some proposals. Uh, when we were up at their site, up at Deb's site, when she identified the noise, it really was coming more from Route 9 than anywhere else. And that just might have been an anomaly, I don't know. But, you know, she's only 870 feet from Route 9, uh, uh, where there's an elevated portion of Route 9 where trucks grind the gears going back and forth and up there. So that makes a lot of noise. But he was supposed to get back to us when we left that meeting in mid-July, knowing that we were coming before this, the other work in September so that we could work on this and try to come up with some alternatives and we were looking for him to give us some ideas because we, you know, when we talked on site, we said, we actually asked him, well, you know, sound wall's not really going to work because the sound's going to trajectory go over it because Deb's elevation is so high that sound wall would have to be like 200 feet high, which is, you know, ridiculous. Uh, and we talked about other types of things that might work. When we were up at the site, we talked about maybe it was, she'd need some, new tempered windows or something that would cut the sound or some plantings up on her property. Because where we were down at, at the Ken site, there's so much vegetation between 
the Ken's parking lot, the Ken's uh, property line, and then Deb's property line is to over 2,000 feet of, of uh, you know, different types of trees, brush, and everything between there that we couldn't figure out anything, and we were open to listening to them if they came back with something. We did not hear from them, and we did not hear from anybody until we came before you in September. And that was the first time I had heard anything from Deb on this was at that hearing. And I happened to have our expert reach out to her expert the next day, wondering why he didn't get back to us. And he told us he hadn't been retained and he was told not to do any further work on it back in July. So she then did retain him after that. And he did submit a report, which I just sent a, a kind of a response to it to, in my letter to Mr. Morris dated December 9th relative to the inaccuracy of some of those representations and its analogies. But that's what we've done. I mean, we're happy to still meet with her, meet with Board of Health, because that's the purview that has jurisdiction over this. And even meet with DEP to try and figure it out. But nobody can tell us where the sound is coming from, from Kent's. So according to her sound expert, the, the sound study that you had done didn't meet the uh, ANSI standards and procedures to assess whether or not it met compliance with mass DEP noise regulations. Has a okay, study uh, been done to meet that? Is if, I could, if I could, Ms. Luttrell, if you read my memo, that, that report was done by agreement of the parties because the two neighbors that met on site with us and their expert thought it was the refrigeration units and they wanted to focus on the refrigeration units. And that was because they did not hear noise of doors opening, of trucks backing up. It was some other type of low frequency noise, not the type of thing that you hear at the loading docks or that you hear when trucks are screeching their brakes or they have those beepers on backing up, but some other type of low frequency noise. It was by agreement of everybody that that's what they would focus on. And that's what's what was focused on in that report. It was not a full-blown noise study. And at the time, if they wanted a full-blown noise study, we probably would have had to talk about who was going to handle all the costs of that. Ken's was willing to go forward if we could identify something, and they did. And they spent a considerable amount of money to create that report based on what everybody wanted him to focus on. Okay, and what he focused on did turn up that the low frequency sound is not coming from Ken's. So, well, so I, I just find it strange that uh, Dr. Demaria and Mr. Farrington have lived in that home for 25 years. I'm pretty sure that Route 9 and 495 have been there for all that time. And they didn't start having issues until 2019, and that's when the bays moved. So it just, uh, it just seems could, strange. They, they, they did start having issues, but it was 18 months after Ken started operations. Uh, traffic in those multiple years on Route 9 and 495 has increased dramatically, especially truck traffic at night. Uh, you know, so I mean, there's a lot of things. I, I don't want to go back uh, and forth. So I'm not I don't, a, I'm I don't not a sound expert. I'm not, I'm not a sound, a sound expert. expert, so I don't want to argue this, but I, yeah. I just think it's a, a huge problem and there's something going on there and you have a, a butters that I've seen the videos of walls shaking. I don't know how you can live like that. There's, um, there's, there's I'm no, there's so no. I'm going to move on from that from now. I, that's that's right. my position. Yeah. Um, I, I, I just want to let you know, uh, uh, me, me, that way I couldn't find the plan. I must have a paper copy in the file, and I thought I had it electronically. I don't. Okay. Mrs. Um, Latrell, Mrs. Latrell has the floor. Please let her speak. Yep, thank you. I'm sorry. I just want to let her know. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. And um, so is, is it... It, Ken's position that the 10 foot overhang for those uh, loading spaces are covered or considered to be um, covered? Yeah, and it was obviously the understanding of the planning board back when they granted that permit because they couldn't have granted the permit if we didn't comply with 
the regulations at the time without granting a waiver if we needed one. And it was determined because of the way they were constructed and the fact that the building actually blocked 90% of the noise that was there uh, going in, in four, three directions, and you have Route 9 on the other side, that it was sufficient and it worked properly and the overhang was correct. Um, in my opinion, those are not enclosed. 10 foot overhang is an enclosed and um, our bylaw clearly states they shall be enclosed if used frequently at night, which I think they definitely are used frequently at night. Um, well, if, if I could, the building inspector at the time and the current building inspector have reviewed them and that's, we were granted the permits and granted a construction permit. So, I, I mean, in all due respect, I understand what, what your position is. And I was just wanted to reiterate what others were at the time and today. Well, so that was then, here we are now. Um, on to landscaping, I think, um, Scott, you touched on this, that the, the landscaping is, hasn't been uh, installed in compliance with the the 2019 site plan, especially around that the detention basin there. It's not the the adequate um, number of, of shrubs and trees isn't there. So a lot that are there are dead. Um, and the the current some of the current wooded area is within the in within the limit of work. Have do you know what trees are there that may be damaged and um, will they pr be protected during construction or will they be replaced or what's the plan there? Um, I don't believe we're any we're in any wooded areas per se. We are in areas of where there is uh, shrub shrub uh, sort of a uh, edge to the, with the exception of course that I provide run and the trees that are right there at that location. Um, I, I guess your def definition of wood, it might be that, you know, the, 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 uh, na the, sh the shrubbery that's there. Um, we're, well, we're only, is, am I, am I mistaken or I'm sorry. I, I'm just talking about the area on the plan, the little squiggly thing that is on the plan says it's a wooded oh, area. Yeah. In, the, that, in but that's, some that's, places, that's, the limit of work goes past that. It does. And those are areas that are more shrubbery and uh, a, a mix of vegetative elements. There might be some small trees in, in, in those areas, but where we're not changing grades and there, there, there may be a tree. Those would be, those would be protected, but I don't think there's anything there of substance um, uh, per se. But uh, we are minimum. We're we're only we're only clearing what we need to for for the project, and we do have uh, the opportunity to protect trees that could be identified. I think that when we get the limit of work actually um, and the delineation by the erosion control, we'll have a a uh, we can actually do some adjustments in the field as necessary to protect anything of, uh, of substance that needs should be protected. I'd be happy to, to uh, walk in uh, with you and, and others on that to make the determination before that work um, starts. And the, the stand of arborvitaes, are those being transplanted or? No, they, no, they don't transplant well. I don't think the arborvitaes do. I think we're better off putting in a new and uh, uh, a new a new bunch there. Okay. Um, quite frankly, yeah. So when you put in, it's a, a good bunch, location for them. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Um, could they be native straight species and not a cultivar? Yes, I believe. The the plant list lists a cultivar. Does it? Okay. No, we should. They should be a. They should be a native or more natural. Not a not a hybrid. In the cypress on the plant schedule, are those being transplanted or are those new plants? Um, so many items. Um, 
we have to uh, without. I'll, go, I'll look at the. I'm gonna. I'm gonna, I'm gonna refer to the plan. I don't necessarily need to share the screen unless. I see, yeah. Um, sorry, I don't I don't have the answer to the tip of my tongue. Because I'm not sure what those are. So the yeah. the Atlantic white um, cedar is a native. There are a bunch yeah. of cypress, and a lot of them aren't native. Yeah, we have. Yeah, we're using the false cypress here, and um, I don't know those what that are is. no, those are new plant. Those are new planted. Uh, there's no, oh, there's three that are there's three that are new and three that are being that three that are being replanted. Okay. On on the on the false cypress. Uh, uh, I mean, so the new ones, if you could use the native species on. Yes. And the viburnum, are those transplants or are those new? The double the double files. Um, they are new. So those are native of Eastern Asia. So if we could get that closer to home. Yeah, I, I, maybe something more like arrowwood or something yeah. like that. Yeah, there, there are a whole bunch of native yeah. barns. Um, we got these from, I thought that we got these from the approved list. Be happy to make that change. Prefer it and yourself. And uh, what is the plan for to plant a successful meadow? As the last one was not, what what changes are being made so that we're guaranteed success this time? Well, last time uh, we had to. I think part the big part of the problem last time was that we had to um, uh, we had to remove a newly seeded lawn area that had been it was really vigorous growing vigorously and in this case here of course it is established lawn also but um it's wet it's more wet and more apt more apt to um to take and and thrive than those that we had planted perhaps on those mounds also um freddie's given us some guidelines and some better uh uh information on how to uh to, she says she says she's going to provide us more information on how to make them much more successful than the one we had. I think um, there's a learning curve there for for all of us. Okay. So, and um, the um, you have um, undisturbed open space listed on the plans. Uh huh. In, yes. In, and open space is defined as permanently protected in our zoning code. Is that permanently protected? No, I, I, I um, did. I didn't understand that that was what that what the table is looking for in that uh, in that in the table as open space. That question did come up from the consultants also. Okay. And no, I thought it was it, I thought I understood it to be when I went to I didn't understand it to be permanently protected land. Um, uh, we don't have anything like that on, on the property. Okay. So um, it needs a new name then. Yeah. I, I think it's open space. I guess it's just open space and just be, or not, be open, open, not open space, green space or something. Open space, space has a, yeah. is defined in our code. Okay. I'd be happy to, uh, to make that change. I think that's all I have for right now. Full soon. Thank you, Mrs. Luttrell. Uh, are you ready, Mrs. Houlihan? Always ready. So I uh, th thank you, Mrs. Luttrell. I, I think a lot of similar comments that Mrs. Luttrell had brought up. Um, as I mentioned prior to the meeting, um, I've been uh, sick with COVID. So I have not had um, the ability to keep up with as much paperwork as possible. So I don't have as many questions today. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Mr. Stein. 
Uh, Karina, are there any uh, abutters in the uh, attendees? Let me take a look. Um, I believe we have Kevin Farrington. Um, trying to see. Um, Kevin Farrington is the only one I recognize. Uh, Jack Bartolini, I believe he is across Route 9. Um, and uh, I, there's a Sam DeTore, but I don't recognize, I'm, I'm not, I, he may be with the- um, he's, with, he's with us, uh, he's not part of our project team. Oh, okay. So just Kevin Farrington, if there's anybody else who is in a butter, if they could raise their hand. Okay. All right, well, I'm glad uh, Mr. Farrington's here. Um, I would very much like to hear um, after um, Andrew and Don take their, have their comments uh, from Mr. Farrington on, um, on their position um relative and in the context of uh what we've heard from the proponent this evening um it's really concerning to me a couple things are concerning to me right now um with all due respect to our proponent uh and the proponents council it has been my experience on the planning board that when there is a substantive change to a site and it's in front of us for review and approval, that we have the opportunity to recommend or require adjustments if it benefits the community. So the fact that this was permitted uh, by a previous board or by a, a building inspector or some other independent body does not have much weight with me and my vote in this review. It's, it's what's in front of us now and how it's impacting the community, especially the abutters. In terms of the um, noise situation, that has me very confused. Um, so I need a lot more clarification and uh, some common ground reach between the proponent and the abutters. Thank you. Mr. Mills. Uh, thank you. Thanks for the presentation and the update, uh, Scott. Much appreciated. Um, I, I'm not going to rehash anything else everyone's already talked about, uh, but I do want to ask about one area. The, the nine spots you said that for the trucks with the heating blocks, are those new or those existing? Uh, am I, I'm on, yeah. No, those uh, were part of the prior, prior, prior project, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, uh, the heating blocks, are those already there? Do the yes. Do trucks sit there and idle? Um, no, I think they just keep the blocks warm when they're not running, my understanding. Okay. Um, that was my main question. Again, I don't want to rehash other things. I'm looking forward to see what Fuss and O'Neill comes back mm -hmm. with. And, um, appreciate the other board members' comments. Thank you, Mr. Morris. So... Um, I said earlier that the type of open items with conservation have the potential, whether it's a great potential or a slight potential, they have the potential to <clears throat> cause changes to what you're proposing. So we're gonna, as I said, we're gonna keep an eye on that. And our next meeting, is January 10th. Hopefully between now and then, you guys will be able to clear up with conservation and give the planning board kind of a green light to approve what's been designed and, and is being proposed without our concern that it could change um, because of uh, requirements to comply with conservation. So that's that's one thing that we'd really like 
and, and may on January 10th, if not resolved, <clears throat> be open to um, ways to proceed, um, if at all, with some of those or any of those open items with conservation. Normally we're on separate tracks, but again, uh, the type of comments that they that are open have a have a potential to change this design. Um, the other thing is, and I think Bill, uh, you're well aware of this. Um, usually, uh, the boards have been advised over many decades that if a proponent has a lawyer in the room, then the board should have a lawyer in the room, and. We've gone to this point um, <clears throat> respectfully listening to Ken's attorney, and um, there seems to be a lot of agreement with what he says. However, this uh, the issue of the loading docks and the, and the enclosures, um, I think, is of great concern, uh, and the board members, at least myself, and I heard Mr. Stein say that um, it's... Uh, it needs to be clarified further. So I'm gonna ask the board <clears throat> if it's our desire to ask the town planner to submit a um, legal opinion request or um, somehow and have our town council look over uh, where we are relative to the previous uh, permits and and uh, details of the site and be properly advised uh, so that when the board does take action, it's, it's um, proper and can, can be sustained. So um, if that's the desire of the board um, or if it's not the desire of the board, speak up now. Otherwise, we'll ask the town uh, planner to submit a legal opinion request. Any, anybody objecting to that at this point? It, 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 it's more for clarification. Um, we're not at the point where we're banging heads or having a big uh, problem yet, but uh, hopefully uh, again, following the guidance that, these board, that our boards have received over, over a lot of time, if the proponent has a lawyer, we, sh we should uh, at least consider getting our lawyer involved. So that's what we'll do. Uh, and hopefully get some guidance between now and January 10th uh, that we'll share with you if we can uh, and clear the path for uh, getting us across the goal line. So let's open it up to the public. Um, and then uh, after that, we'll entertain uh, or we'll uh, hopefully hear a request for uh, a, an extension of the approval period. So let's open it up to the public. Anyone from the public questions or comments? Uh, yes, we have uh, Kevin Bonner. Uh, Kevin, you're on you should be all set to talk if you'd like. Okay, hi, can you hear me? Yeah, uh, yes, uh, yeah, so I just wanted to point out um, if there's any question about the noise coming from Penn's, I have driven over there at one in the morning. Kevin, opinion. we're having trouble hearing you. And if you could just oh, okay. identify your address. Oh, Kevin Farrington, 58 Flag Road. Thank you. Um, I just want to let you know the noise is definitely coming from Penn's. It's in the evenings at night. So looking at two in the afternoon, um, we usually don't experience the noise at two in the afternoon. Um, it's, I've driven over there at one in the morning, parked along Route 9. It's not coming from any other business down there. It's clearly coming from the Kent's parking lot. Um, it's from the trucks backed up against the docks, but it's also from trucks parked right where the new Arbor Vitae will be. Um, there's trucks sitting there idling. Um, I don't know if the drivers are sleeping or what, but basically we've moved all this to the west side and turned it into a truck stop. And it is affecting neighbors other than ours, than ourselves. 
Um, we've talked to neighbors down the street whose children have been complaining. They didn't know where the noise was coming from. They didn't know about the permitting process. Um, it took us six months to know, to even complain to the building commissioner. We did talk to the police chief. Um, he told us there's nothing to do he can do because there's no noise bylaw. Um, so we don't call the police. Um, we can nightly if we need to, but it's kind of counterproductive at this point. So um, that's all I want to say. Thank you. Can I ask Mr. Farrington a question, Mr. Chair? Yes, please. Mr. Farrington, uh, I'm just curious why we're not hearing from any other abutters. What would, I know this is speculative on your part, but I would be curious to hear if you do have any uh, idea why it just seems like, you know, you're the lone voice in this. And, you know, I, I personally do weigh a butter's um, feedback heavily. Uh, but it, normally in these kinds of situations, we hear from more than one party. Yeah, I mean, we haven't been actively trying to recruit people. Um, we actually um, have neighbors that have mentioned us hearing the trucks at night. Um, they don't know what to do about it. Um, they don't know to come and speak out against it. Um, I guess we need to maybe organize them. We're not really neighborhood organizers, so that's probably our fault. Um, and some of them have you know, lives. They have little kids and they have other battles that they're fighting like trucks flying down the road and trees getting cut and um, a lot of other things, so. But if you would like for January 10th, I can try to encourage some of them to show up and speak out if that would help. Thank you. Karina. Mr. Chair, Mr. Chair if, I, if I could, please. Right, just one second, Bill, please. Sure. Karina, if it's okay with you, um, could we suggest to Mr. Farrington when he speaks to the neighbors, um, and if they have uh, need for knowledge of the process to ha to just contact you. you oh, absolutely. You're kind of, yeah, you, you, you have, uh, you're kind of like the um, ground zero for uh, information on all the projects in town mm. or under okay. site plan. So uh, my if, email is on the planning website. And you can just call the planning office as well. Um, I usually try to answer the phone. If not, I'll, I'll get a message and I'll return the call. Thank you. Thanks, Karina. Go ahead, Bill. Yeah, uh, I was going to suggest, because I've suggested this before, and it suggested it to Deb, uh, Mr. Barrington's uh, wife. Uh, if, and Jim, I know this is before to you, but if you hear the trucks at a particular time, if you could email Jim Bourne and myself, and Deb's got both our emails, so that we know the time that this is occurring, so we can have somebody look in the yard and determine what's going on there, because that helps us determine if there is an issue and where it's coming from and if it can be addressed. And I, I had offered that up to, to Deb, and I forget who the other butter was when this originally started, and they would email at times, and we were able to address some of those issues. So it would be very helpful uh, if you could do that. Uh, and uh, Mr. Morris, uh, I was actually going to suggest that maybe you guys reach out to town council. I believe it's Jay Talleman now, uh, yep. because I could, see, I could see that we might be coming to a, a point down the road where there might be uh, more heated discussion that really could be resolved better with legal opinions. Uh, and, uh, you know, because Ken's just wants to work cooperatively and, and do what we can here. Uh, so I'm, I'm glad to hear that you suggested that. Uh, and if there's nothing further, I will authorize Karina <laughs> to, to release the extension and continuance. So the extension, um, is it your desire to extend the approval period to the normal um, Friday after the next uh, public hearing? 
Actually, um, uh, actually, so actually, I think she put it out further than that. Isn't that yeah, correct, Serena? That's correct. So we wouldn't have to do it two or three times in between, or two times in between. So, you can share my screen if you want. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. What's the date that you're requesting the extension to, Bill? Uh, I, have to, wait, I have to close my screen up so I can see it on. January it's, uh, on the form. Um, what do you have here? Uh, it's January 28th. Yeah, so January 28th. The hearing on the second. 10th and, and uh, decision of the 28th. Yeah, so it's continued to the 10th and time to respond for you guys to respond is January 28th. And that's because there's a second planning board meeting scheduled on January 24th. Exactly. <laughs> so the uh, request for continuation slash extension that's on the screen now, that's what you're requesting the board to act on? Yes. Mr. Miller. Yeah, per per Karina's request, yep, yeah, we, we agree to that. And it's signed, yep. Yeah. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion that we um, approve the uh, client's request to extend the approval period or the applicant's request to extend the approval period for major site plan approval and special permit lower impact development for Ken's Food Inc. at uh, 325 Turnpike Road to January 28th, 2022, again, as requested by the applicant. January Second. 28th. January 28th. Uh, isn't that what I said? Yep. Yeah. I seconded. Motions been made and seconded. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor, Morris, yes. Mills, yes. Stein, yes. Luttrell, yes. Mahan, yes. So the next step would be to continue the public hearing, Mr. Mills. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion we continue the public hearing for 325 uh, Turnpike Road, Ken Food uh, Expansion, major site plan approval, and for uh, 325 uh, Turnpike Road, Ken's Food Expansion, special permit uh, for LID to January 10th, uh, 2022 at 7.05 p.m. Seconded. Motion has been made and seconded. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor, Morris, yes. Mills, yes. Stein, yes. Latrell, yes. And yes. Thank you. We'll see you then. Thank you. And everybody have a Merry Christmas and a Happy Holiday. Thank you. Thank you. you. Too. Thank you, you too. very much. <clears throat> Next item on the agenda is a continued public hearing, One Pine Hill Drive, Harvard University. Collections mm -hmm. storage building, major site plan approval. This uh, public hearing is continued from November 15th, 2021. And also a continued public hearing, Harvard University Collections Storage Building, special permit for lower impact development. Also continued from November 15th, 2021. We'll ask the town planner to give us uh, the update All right. Um, take this out. Since the last public hearing on November 15th, 2021, um, Conservation Commission met on November 18th uh, for their stormwater management permit. Uh, on November 29th, we received the second submission from Harvard, Harvard University Planning Office. Um, led by Diane Gray, who's in the attendees. Uh, the submission was sent to Fuss and O'Neill um, December 2nd and to the planning board members and also to the town departments. Um, I don't uh, believe I received any comments back from the town departments. Um, today, I received uh, Fuss and O'Neill's review comments of the submission uh, number two, which is Plans dated November 24th, 2021, and a stormwater report that was revised to November 22nd. 
that brings us to this evening. Um, I'd like to point out that the Fuss and O'Neill uh, follow-up review letter indicated that they had no further comments, um, that their prior uh, review comments had been addressed by the applicant team. Um, however, if anything does change uh, from tonight's meeting, that they would need to re-review it. But um, as at this point, um, they had completed their review um, to their satisfaction. Uh, I also received an extension request um, to continue the meeting to the next meeting and then also the approval timeframe um, beyond that in case we need an additional meeting. And that is also uh, on the Dropbox for review. And that brings us to today. And um, I see that Diane Gray is here and members of her team are in the attendees list. And uh, Diane can probably, when the time comes, let us know who she would like to have elevated to panelist. Thank you. So why don't we welcome Diane back and um, let you speak uh, before we open it up to the public and the planning board. Good evening. Oh, good evening, Mr. Chair and the, um, the planning board. Could I ask that um, you elevate as panelists um, Anthony Proprocki, William Marr, um, Kendall Marr Trumbull, and Matt Cody for our project team. They're also here. Thank you. Um, as, as Karina mentioned, we, um, we were here on November 15th and we've um, submitted revised plans based on the Fuss and O'Neill comments. And um, Tony Proprocki will walk us through those comments and then we're happy to answer any questions that you might have. I just wanna add one thing. I did fail to mention that um, I did receive an email from Open Space Preservation Commission Chair Freddie Gillespie this afternoon, um, uh, wanting to just work through some of the plantings to be native species. And that was forwarded to Diane and her team. Um, Thank you. right. You're welcome. And also the planning board. Thank you. Sorry about that. So I'll, I'll hop in here quickly and give you just a, a brief recap of what's changed. Um, as Diane noted, we were here last month and we provided an introduction to our project. Um, as some of you may recall, we're proposing, uh, we've got an existing building at One Pine Hill Drive on the South Borough campus. We're proposing approximately a 20,000 square foot addition to that existing storage structure to create new space for unoccupied storage of records, um, files and papers and file boxes on shelving. Um, as, as the town planner mentioned, we submitted, uh, the week after the meeting, we submitted supplementary information to address the concerns of the board as well as your peer reviewer. Um, these included general notes and clarifications to some of the drawings just covering items that were discussed. Um, the addition of dimensions on the plan were requested primarily for parking spaces and driveways, which were requested from your peer reviewer. Um, the addition of uh, a photometric plan, as well as a new specification for fixture type W1, which is more in compliance with your town bylaw for exterior lighting, um, as well as the addition of a landscape plan uh, which, which gave a better sense of the area surrounding, uh, did a better job of defining the intent to not take down existing trees um, and called out the area that we are looking to plant. Um, as, as the town planner mentioned, we did receive the peer reviewers comments today, which noted that they, didn't, that they had reviewed those materials and had no further comments. Um, we also appeared before the Conservation Commission last week and received a favorable um, approval of our stormwater permit with that board. Um, as, as Karina noted, we did also receive the note from the Open Space Committee today, noting the concern about the uh, native grass species. Our intent here is to develop a native seed mixture, which is acceptable to the town. Um, we're very happy to work with the Open Space Committee, as well as the town planner going forward to help select a seed type, which is acceptable to, to the town. Um, we would certainly be open to having this as a condition of our decision, which would be finalized prior to any seeding activity, uh, should the project uh, go forward and should you choose to grant our special permit. Um, with that, I can go in more detail about the plans, but uh, we trust that we've addressed your comments to date. Uh, we're hopeful that you'll act favorably on our petition. And with that, I'll, I'll put it back to the board for any questions or any clarifications we can provide on our materials. Very good. Excellent. Um, this is the way it should go. Submit a design, have it peer reviewed, make some minor adjustments 
and be pretty much ready to um, move on. So I'll open it up to the board. Um, <clears throat> depending on, on how that goes, um, the time between now and January 10th um, may be used to uh, develop a uh, decision document that would uh, outline uh, and record this, the process of site plan and lower impact development. Um, and then uh, list any wa waiver requests, list, list any conditions, uh, and hopefully, uh, and poss quite possibly, be ready for the um, public hearing to be closed on January 10th and for the board to take a vote. But let's see how it goes tonight. Mr. Mills. Yeah, thank you. First of all, I just want to state uh, that I did watch the last uh, meeting uh, on YouTube, uh, filled out the Millen's form so I can participate in this. Um, I know it was stated earlier, but I don't know if everyone was on when that was stated. Um, so Anthony, I think the first thing uh, I didn't catch on the last meeting was if you can go like a couple slides back, I think to, to a larger uh, view of the actual, uh, the site, the, the gray areas, I think you mentioned that those are existing footprints or something, right? What, what are those? Um, so on, on this, the darker gray, uh, notably the book deposit. It's not those, it's the lighter gray, I think in the middle. These yeah. here. These are, these are existing uh, slabs, which were former buildings, which have, pre have been demolished. They are, they are not currently in use. They're, they're literally just a concrete slab on the site that is unused. So we've got a couple of those, these two here, and then the two buildings over here will also be slabs as they're in the process of being demolished at this point. And no further like plans for that at this time, like what you're gonna do, like remove them or just leave them? That's, that's correct. The plan, they, they, after the demolition, which was a number of years ago, the plan was to leave them in place. There are no current plans to develop them and any development work on those, um, I assume would, would require your board's approval as well as a, a permit from the town. Okay. And um, I can just say, I appreciate you switching away from that wall pack. Um, I know that's always a, uh, uh, an item that we discuss with a lot of applicants. So, uh, Appreciate them. That's okay. it, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Okay, very good, Mr. Stein. My only comment is um, I wish more proponents followed this uh, example and were as organized and responsive and communicative. Uh, the planning board and the planning department um, sometimes is uh, characterized by some as uh, being an obstacle or unfair to proponents. Uh, we review and approve good submissions and submissions that uh, are more problematic, take longer and get uh, the appropriate scrutiny. So I, I wanna thank uh, this proponent for their great work. Thank you, Mrs. Luttrell. Yes. Thank you very much. I want to echo the thanks for my other board members. Um, I would be in favor of a, um, a condition um, on the approval for the uh, biodiverse lawn mix to be of native, native species, because what's in there now is not native species. Um, and the one question, what are the um, hours for the, the lights? Are they on? 24 seven or do they go off at night? I, I believe the intent is that they are on 24 seven. Matt Cody is on the call. Perhaps Matt, you can address that. You know, I would, I would think that some of them just for security purposes would be on 24 um, seven, but we can look at that and see what, how, how many of them need to be on. Some of them may just need to be on for you know, when people are there during working hours. Um, Good, the, the less light at night, the better. That's all I have. Thank you very much again. Um, Mimi, the um, grass mix, do we have anything like that now that you know of? 
at other sites? Um, that's that's planted and growing. We've permitted um, grass mix on uh, 156 North Borough Road, but it, um, it hasn't been installed as permitted. Uh, the reason I ask is um, once in a while uh, when working with a quality um, cooperative uh, environmentally friendly proponent, um, we come up with something that is a great idea and that we then refer other project proponents to those good ideas. Is this possibly one that if properly developed uh, and installed and functional would then be like a um, the standard that we would ask the others in the future to, to follow? Yeah, absolutely. We would call it the Harvard mix. Yes. <laughs> and then going to the, uh, the lighting, if that um, <clears throat> can be resolved before January 10th, so that can be included as a, a condition of, uh, of approval. Do you, does, um, <clears throat> does the site have, uh, I know at one time you had your own security there 24 seven, um, but those days of that type of operation are over. Um, what kind of security do you have there now, if any? So the depository ha does have 24 seven security for you know, the, the depository itself. Uh, there is no full-time security for, for the rest of the campus, but we do have um, a third-party security provider that does, I think it's uh, two times per night, um, drive-through and building checks on the existing buildings other than the depository. And then on the weekends, I believe they are there three times for drive-throughs and checks of the property. And the gate is also down um, during the weekends and after hours, and you'll need card access to, to enter the gate or the, the property itself. Thank you. Mrs. Houlihan, were you all done, Mar uh, Mimi? Yes, thank you. Mrs. Houlihan. Yes, I echo the sentiments of my fellow board members. Um, the, the memo from November 24th where you addressed the, the Fuss and O'Neill comments was really well, um, very clear, very communicative and very easy to follow. So thank you very much for that. I really appreciate the change in the, the lighting fixtures. And as you were able to kind of cite our, our new um, bylaw, so very much appreciate that you've complied with those components. My only um, stipulation like Mimi, I think is really just understanding if we can eliminate um, a 24 seven and even just be an um, motion activated or something during, during certain hours of the night that would be appreciated. But if there is an opportunity for you to clarify that, um, but I am supportive of the native plantings and some sort of um, understanding of the lighting. But I am really excited to work with a proponent like yourselves. And um, again, wish this was a modeled behavior for all of our proponents. So thank you. Anything else uh, from the public? Questions, comments? So, Karina, we have um, the approval period for the site plan is December 25th, and for the lid is January 24th. Did I miss this? Is there a request for a, um, I think you told me there is, for an extension uh, of the approval period? Karina, you are mute. I'm babbling over here. Um, yes, there is an extension request um, in the Dropbox. Do you, you have like that, to... Sarah? Can you put it up? Marty's going to share it for us. So, Diane, is it your uh, desire to have the planning board act on that request tonight? Yes, thank you. And that's correct. It's continue the hearing, public hearing to January 10th and extend the deadline to January 28th um, for, for action. Yeah. So it may um, 
we may not need that long, but it's safe to have the action on the 28th. Um, it doesn't hurt anything. No, wait. and especially in the winter time with, uh, we have a problem with, uh, <clears throat> you know, power outages or whatever. So, okay, we have this on the, on the screen. Uh, I'll entertain a motion, Mr. Mills. Mr. Chairman, make a motion that we extend the uh, approval period for uh, Harvard University, one Pine Hill Drive, uh, major site plan approval, special permit, oh, and the special permit lower impact development to uh, January 28th, 2022, as requested by the applicant. Second. Motion has been made and seconded. Any discussion? Anyone from the public? Hearing none, all in favor, Morris, yes. Mills, yes. Stein, yes. Drill, yes. And yes. So now that the approval period has been extended, we're able to uh, continue the public hearing to January 10th. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion. We continue the uh, public hearing for one Pine Hill uh, Drive, uh, Harvard University Collection Storage Building, major site plan approval, and also extend the uh, the special permit uh, for the lid for one Pine Hill Road Drive, Harvard University Collection and Storage Unit to January uh, 10th, 2022 at uh, 7.15 PM. Second. Motion's been made and seconded. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Morris, yes. Mills, yes. Stein, yes. Petrell, yes. Lahan, yes. We'll see you uh, next year. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. We'll see you in the new year. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Your holidays. Okay, next item on the agenda is an approval not required, 44 Oregon Road. I ask the town planner to uh, go over this one with us and hopefully put it on the screen. Mm -hmm. All right, the uh, planning department received an application uh, for 40 and uh, for ANR approval not required form A uh, for the property at 44 Oregon Road owned by um, the Morans. The one second, the surveyor of record um, is Jarvis Land Survey. Is that the one? Let me just make sure. No, I'm sorry. It's um, RJP Construction Engineering, uh, Mr. Bob Parente. Um, I believe he may be in the attendees list. Let's see. Yes, see Robert Parente, Sarah, in the attendees yep, list. I'm getting him, He's, he should be coming over shortly. Thanks. Yep. So this is property is, uh, essentially um, taking one lot and dividing it into two. And uh, I'll let Mr. Parenti um, give you more details. Um, I reviewed this plan. Um, the surveyor made some adjustments um, and some revisions in order to um, make the plan complete. Um, he was very helpful and he provided new plans and um, everything appeared to check out. There was proper frontage on a way. And that's what I have done. I think um, the surveyor can give more detail if he's there. He Bobby is with us. Yeah. Can there you hear is. me now? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I just had to unmute, sorry about that. Uh, good evening, Mr. Chairman and board members, Bob Parenti, um, presenting this plan for Mar Martin and Elizabeth Moran of 44 Oregon Road. Um, they, they currently live in the house at 44 Oregon Road and um, their desire is to separate lot five away from the house. So to create a new house lot with the existing frontage 
um, <clears throat> as they're looking to down the road a little bit in order to downsize and possibly move into the farmhouse, which is at 42 Oregon Road. So the plan shows, I've been working on this property um, since 1989 when we started the survey. Um, of all the various lots, there have been a number of lots created down Oregon Road over the years. Um, one of the planning board regulations requires showing the wall. So there's an interior wall, which depicts an old abandoned and discontinued way, which cuts through both lots, lots 5B and lot 5A. There's an existing stone wall at the back of the property uh, where the town of Southboro abuts um, to the north. Further up in the and, rear of the property. Yeah, the rear of the property, correct. Yep. Yeah, to the left. Yep, right there. So basically we have resurveyed the property and um, started from the back of the stone wall at the town of Southboro land. And actually we came out and <clears throat> located one of the original drill holes out front at the corner of the abutter at number 48 Oregon Road. And um, just so the people know what they're purchasing, we put an iron pen at the front corner of between the, the division between the two lots. And then another iron pen up opposite the pool shed um, on the existing house lot. Yep, go down that line. So that, a... Does my arrow show up, Karina, or is that your arrow? I okay, think yep, that's... right there, yep. Yep. Yeah, so I guess it's your cursor that's controlling that. Yeah, I thought it might have been mine. Yep. <laughs> um, Karina asked for the, town planner asked for the zoning requirements, the plan references, and also a description. There's a note down to the left of the, the title block describing the purpose of the plan um, is to divide lot five, which is currently known as 44 Oregon Road into two new lots. Um, there is an existing easement, driveway easement that's being used that was granted to number 48 Oregon Road, um, which used to be a, uh, Marty's sister, Mary Ann Cole. Um, they, the, the access in front of 48 Oregon Road is very steep so that back, I forget when the house was built, maybe 2000 or 1998, when that house was built, the driveway, it was decided that there would be an easement for the, um, for the coals to access, access their driveway. It kind of, they used the driveway for many years, but the actual easement wasn't created until right before they were gonna sell because I think um, it was never formally made an easement. So I had prepared that plan back probably around 2015 or 2016, which is what that deed reference goes to. Um, that's really the summary of the plan. Um, I guess I would open up to any questions from the board. Very good. Thank you. You're welcome. Mr. Mills, questions, comments? I have no questions. Mr. Stein. Uh, there's, um, am I mistaken, Karina, about the need for a 15 foot setback? That would be for the house. What you see there is the shed and a pool. So the house on number 44 on lot 5B. So the setback doesn't apply to, to a structure on the lot? Uh, if anything, I think it's 10 feet. And it's 10 feet. Yeah. It's, Thank in, you. Uh, it's 10 feet. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. That's it. Mrs. Luttrell? Uh, good evening. Uh, in the interest of full disclosure, I live on Oregon Road, but I'm not a nabutter to these parcels. They're over 1,700 feet for my property. Um, I have no questions. I'm all set. Thank you. Thank you. Mrs. Houlihan? 
have no questions. Thank you. Anybody from the public, questions or comments? Seeing none, uh, we would be at the point of uh, entertaining a motion to endorse the this ANR. Chair, I make a motion that the planning board endorse the ANR for 44 Oregon Road as presented by the applicant. Seconded. Motions are made and seconded. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor, Morris, yes. Mills, yes. Stein, yes. Latrell, yes. Lehan, yes. So what happens is, um, the plans will be in the town planner's office and the five planning board members will make arrangements to physically go there and uh, endorse the plans and the A and the uh, form form one. And then uh, the town planner will notify you, Mr. Parente, that they're ready. Very good. Thank you all very much. Yeah, Karina, I just want to get in there before Marnie. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'll wear a mask. I can always thank, bring thank it you by all. Marty. <laughs> thank Pass you. The door. Good Next to see you all again. The, thank you. Next item on the agenda is an approval not required, 17 Granule Road. Well, that's the town planner to uh, go over this one. All right. 17 Granwell Planning Office received an application for approval not required, Form A from um, the applicant, uh, Judith Christensen. Um, the person who was actually co coordinating with me was um, Jim Venencasa, who you've met previously on a prior ANR. I believe he's interested in purchasing the lot that's going to be created out of um, off of this existing lot. Uh, I just want to see if somebody's here from them. Um, I believe John Grenier is in the attendees list. Um, I recognize his yep. name. Okay, uh, Jarvis Land Survey him. was the surveyor of record. Again, um, this is one lot at 17 um, Granuel that they would like to divide into two. Um, I received the plan. Um, the surveyor made some um, minor revisions to make sure everything was in order and on the plan. And then I filed it with the town clerk and um, that's what I have um, is John Grenier uh, Don, if Don, if um, John Grenier, who is with Jarvis Land Survey, I believe, is uh, yep, here. He's also. promoted. Okay. John, you all set? Yeah, I'm. I'm here. Great. Here thank you. Are. you. Uh, yes. No. I'm. I'm an engineer, um, and I. I work with Mr. Vencasa as well. So okay. um, he asked me to attend, and if there were any questions, to um, to address them. But just uh, overall. Uh, what the planner said was correct. The uh, the existing owner at 17 Granuel is uh, they're selling their house, um, and uh, what we're proposing to do is to subdivide it into uh, a second lot that would actually have frontage on Burnett Road, um, and uh, the segmentation of the lot. There is a, a wetland that bisects the lot, so. Um, pretty much we're cutting it right down the middle. Um, there's plenty of upland located on what's shown as lot two that again would have front of John Burnett Road. Um, so uh, that, that's really the, the long and short of it. Uh, one one uh, item that was requested for Jarvis to add to the plans was the location of the existing septic for the existing house at 17 uh, Granuale which uh, that is currently shown on, uh, on the front portion uh, between the house and, and Granuel. So uh, there's plenty of separation obviously between the existing system on number 17 and, and the newly created lot. So uh, that, that's really a long and short of it. If anybody has any questions, uh, I'll try to, try to address them the best I can. Thank you. Mr. Mills. No questions. Mr. Stein. 
I have no questions. Mrs. Luttrell. No questions. Mrs. Houlihan. No questions. Thank you. I, I have no I have no questions. Uh, Mr. Mills. I make a motion that we approve the AR request uh, by the applicant for 17 Granular Road um, as presented. Second. Motion has been made and second in any discussion. Hearing none, all in favor, Morris, yes. Mills, yes. Stein, yes. Patrol, yes. Julian, yes. Okay, good, good. Very good, John. Uh, okay. Thank you very much. Appreciate your time. Thank you. Have a, have a good uh, rest of the year. You too. Thanks again. Thank you. Um, next item on the agenda is a discussion item, public shade tree removal policy and tree bylaw proposal. Karina. Coming. Okay. Just grab my folder. So if you recall at the in late fall, early winter of 2020, um, Mimi and I, Mark Purple, Prior Town Council, Karen Galligan, um, Sam Stivers, uh, were on a group of people who were tasked to come up with a public shade tree policy. Um, that was drafted. Um, it remains in draft um, status at this time. Um, one of the things was the uh, difference between um, consolidated public hearings with the tree ward and for scenic roads um, or independent. And um, the planning board at the time asked me to provide a letter to the Board of Selectmen um, indicating that the planning board was um, in favor of joint public hearings with the tree warden uh, for any trees that uh, are proposed to be removed off of scenic roads. Um, so as things kind of carry on, um, we received information from Sam Stivers a couple months ago who had formulated uh, a little bit of a revised uh, flow chart uh, showing um, the process. And I asked him if before he proceeds at the Board of Selectmen to have the planning board have an opportunity to look at his information um, and to opine on it. Um, so that's where we are. Um, it's in the packet, it's also on the Dropbox. There's a tree trimming and removal process overview that was drafted by Sam Stivers in October 28th, 2021. Um, and you'll notice to the right of the flow chart is where um, it lends itself to scenic road trees. And in this particular flow chart, it indicates that um, if the scenic roads are proposed to be removed, um, there is an arborist report provided to the planning board. The arborist is um, contracted with the DPW. Um, and then the planning board holds a joint hearing with the tree warden. And then depending on the outcome of the meeting, if of the public hearing, if the um, if there's no opposition and the tree is approved to be removed, it can be removed. If not, if there's opposition, then um, the decision would have to go to court. So there were some conflicting issues here because Mass General Law um, indicates that if you have a scenic road, that it should be a consolidated public hearing with the tree warden with a typical public hearing process where you advertise for two Mondays. Um, we would post, actually the tree warden is supposed to, you know, post the public hearing, um, put the placard on the tree uh, or trees, and then attend a planning board hearing um, jointly to determine the outcome of the request. Um, in the interim, it's my understanding uh, that the DPW um, director, Karen Galligan, as you all know, um, 
felt that the tree warden first, it's her opinion that they shouldn't be consolidated public hearings. She would like to hold an independent tree warden hearing and then the planning board would hold their public hearing. Um, there are some issues with that because, um, you know, the public, it's not very convenient for the public to have to attend two public hearings. The DPW holds their public hearings at the tree location. The planning board holds it in um, a location, whether it's a Zoom meeting or at the hearing um, hall, office, and call it from hearing room. Uh, so there's, there's this different approach. So as you recall, we recently went through a tree removal um, public hearing and we had suggested, we had said that based on mass general law that it should be a consolidated public hearing. Um, well, the tree warden as part of the application that the applicant had, had provided an email to this person and said, you know, I recommend that the trees get removed. Um, so I had sent a legal opinion request to, or an email to town council, Jay Talman, asking him um, several questions about what was appropriate or not. And he had opined in an email back to me that um, the scenic road tree hearings should be uh, consolidated joint hearings with the tree warden and the planning board. Um, so there is some disconnect here between what uh, Master and Alar is and um, kind of the DPW's um, approach differing from the planning board's approach. The other thing is that, uh, and this is somewhat important, that there is an, in the state statute, it says to the effect what trees can be cut down without approval. And it's usually if it's a public safety hazard. Um, the other thing is that typically trees would come before the planning board if uh, they're gonna be removed because of roadway widening. So during the tree policy, uh, the public shade tree policy that we were drafting during that process, um, it was our understanding, Mimi and mine that, you know, any tree to be removed on a scenic road would default to um, a consolidated public hearing with the planning board and the tree warden. Other trees that are not on scenic roads are under the jurisdiction, mean, all trees are under the jurisdiction of the tree warden, but trees that were not on scenic roads don't come to the planning board for a public hearing. So um, this discussion is supposed to kind of get reconfirm or any new ideas that the planning board has um, going forward and how they feel the process should be. Um, Master and Alar is pretty clear about scenic road public hearings. Um, the confusion is when we are making our own local policy for when scenic road trees uh, come before the planning board? Is it just when there is roadway construction, roadway wi widening? But again, I think the idea was that it was an agreement that all scenic roads would come before the planning board. Um, so here we are. And Mimi, if you have anything to add, um, Mimi's been working closely on this with me over the past year and a half. Um, so she may have some additional points that are, you know, can clarify what I was saying. One long sentence, sorry. Mm -hmm. Hey, I, Mr. Chairman. Absolutely. So back in uh, March of 2019, almost three years ago, um, we had uh, became a tree city and adopted um, a tree bylaw that obligated the town to abide by Mass General Laws Chapter 87 and the um, Chapter 4015C, which is the scenic uh, road statute under Mass General Laws. 
And from the time that that was adopted, trees came down without hearings. So the planning board asked to have a discussion with the, <clears throat> excuse me, the board of selectmen. And from that came this working group that um, Karina referred to. And a year ago, we came up with the policy. Initially, the planning board, as had been the practice in the past, wanted all tree hearings to be joint hearings before the planning board. And um, the planning board agreed to that. We went back to the working group and there was um, pushback from the, um, the DPW superintendent. So we compromised that all scenic road trees would come as consolidated hearings to the planning board, but all other tree removals would be hearings uh, before the tree warding. And trees continued to come down without hearings. So this new process that a year later after it was agreed upon, the planning board sent a letter to the board of selectmen a year ago saying we supported the process. And now it has been retooled so that scenic road hearings are consolidated hearings that come before the planning board. But then the, if the DPW supervisor or the tree warden have an arborist report that says a tree needs to be removed, then it gets removed without a hearing, which is a violation of Mass General Laws Chapter 87 in our bylaw. Uh, the tree section, chapter 154, which obligates us to follow chapter uh, 87. So what I would like to ask, since this policy doesn't seem to be going anywhere and it's been in the works for a year and it's getting worse and trees are continuing to come down without hearings, um, I would like to see if there's support from the planning board to uh, write a tree bylaw that would go before uh, town meeting. That would cover that, that would make sure that all trees, public shade trees um, have the hearings as required, that scenic road hearings are joint consolidated hearings as required by law with the tree warden and the uh, planning board, and that there's some type of planting plan for uh, trees, because we take them down, but they don't seem, we don't plant any, that would cover all of those areas that are of great importance to um, myself and I know a lot of other people in town. Thank you. Um, Mimi, uh, the this tree bylaw, um, do you know if other towns have Similar. similar many other towns do so whether or not they're a tree city tree city is more of a um it's program but the if it's a, a bylaw then it's required it's a requirement so this this bylaw would um would be uh the result of some research into what other how other town other towns do it and um a draft would then be uh, proposed. Mm -hmm. I could bring a draft for the next uh, planning board meeting if you'd like. There are a Let's lot of other towns that have tree bylaws. Let's see if the planning board um, is in favor of, of that action. I am. So, Mr. Chair, may I ask a question? Oh, oh yeah. We're just this is a discussion. We can open just open it up. Yeah. So, um, don't get me wrong, Mimi. I'm I'm, in, I, I'm frustrated that the trees are coming down too. So, uh, how is the bylaw going to be different from what we've already adopted with Tree USA, where they're supposed to have these hearings and everything? Like, what's the determining? Like, it seems like we're we're just not falling, or not we, but. Someone's just not following the rules that are already supposed to be followed. And how's the bylaw going to make, make it better? Um, well, for one thing, it would clarify. Um, there is an exception to, um, to public hearings if trees um, 
let me see. If they um, obstruct, hinder, or incommode, then they don't need to come before a public hearing, but there's a, a very wide definition of that used in town. And that would, so a lot of trees are taken down without hearings because they're deemed to be dangerous. And the, the way the Mass General Law reads, it's in the present tense that they obstruct, <laughs> hinder, or incommode at that time, not that it may happen in 50 years. So mm -hmm. it would, it would tighten up a lot of those uh, loopholes that have uh, trees have been falling through for the past, I don't know, how many years. So, so as an example then, right? And I appreciate you helping me through this. Um, like from the last meeting for uh, Lover's Lane, since I just listened to it the other day, uh, where the, the gentleman was showing there was a five inch hole in it and stuff like that. It was deemed that it was not going to be survive and everything that that could be an example of where the tree warden could say okay it's just going to come down it's could be a hazard and they take it down in today's environment and we where it sounds like in the new bylaw it could state it would already have to have like branches down or you know, half across the road or split in half um across power lines before you say okay you can just take that down without a bylaw, without a, a hearing. Is that right? And, and I'm being, trying to, I'm not trying to hold you to anything, but is that what I'm kind of hearing? Yes, it should pose a present hazard. Okay, no, I'm in favor of them. How about Jesse? Uh, well, I support uh, Mimi's idea because I would like to see this discussed um, openly at town meeting to be honest i don't fully understand the answer to mr mills's question um because it seems like the the department of public works um ultimately has been granted authority by the board of selectmen board of selectmen is the oversight of the dpw not us. And um, if the DPW says a tree is, is dangerous, they can chop it down. And <clears throat> I think that it's going to be interesting to have this aired out at town meeting. And hopefully the superintendent of public works will explain <laughs> their actions because uh, to me, it's pretty clear that the accountability just hasn't been there. Uh, that the Board of Selectmen has too many other things to worry about or what have you. They haven't been able to, um, you know, hold this, hold the, the, the Public Works Department accountable when it comes to tree removal. So um, absolutely, thank you, Ms. Luttrell, for your work on this and fully support uh, moving forward. And Marty? Yeah, so um, uh, thanks for your comments, Mr. Stein. I agree. I think it needs to be discussed at town meeting. Um, but having understood kind of the process with doing this, Mimi, one of my um, guidance, and I'm happy to help support you if you need some help, is just thinking about if there is an injustice committed, who actually, like, what is the retribution? And how do, who is the authority for which to, you know, what happens then? And where to like who handles that challenge? That challenge. Um, obviously, we've had no no way to handle it now. We know there's um, some things that are have not been um, appropriate in in the town. So like when it does, I think we need to have an avenue on how that's handled. But I would be in full support, and I'm happy to toss my hat in for some email um, iteration or working on helping you make it that draft. Thank you. So going back to uh, Jesse, you, you brought up a good point and this would lean back over to Mimi. Um, so if you've looked into other towns bylaws, like we always do when we're 
proposing something that we think other towns already do a good job with. <clears throat> Some of them we find are multiple pages and way, way too much detail or hard to understand. And others are so simple that they can't, you can't really uh, enforce them. So the ones, you know, we certainly trust that you know um, what would probably work here, but be able to say, um, you know, this is, this is a, a bylaw or pieces of a bylaw from, a, and then whatever town it is, and our discussions with their DPW or their tree wood is, works great. It works great. Everybody, everybody's pulling in the same direction or it's totally ignored or somewhere in the middle. So that's the type of thing I think that would help uh, with Mr. Stein's concerns, all of our concerns that it's not just a bylaw that um, it's gotta be something that actually works in other towns. And that's, that's usually what puts it over the top when it comes to town meeting, if we can show something is good and this is how it, it actually works in other towns, then people feel comfortable to support it. Anything else on this? Yes, two things. I just want to point out that um, uh, Mimi and I will be meeting with um, Town Council Jay Talliman um, and Karen Galligan and Lisa Braccio on Wednesday. Um, Town Council has normal, has uh, regular um, townhouse hours this coming Wednesday. Um, and uh, Mark Purple made an arrangement for us to be able to meet with him for half hour or so after that time frame, um, so we can get some more input and feedback from town council at that point as well, which should be helpful. And then uh, we do have some public hands raised too, Don, when the time comes. Oh, good. Um, is it, I indicated to uh, Karina that, um, you know, Mimi, you're gonna be there with uh, town council and uh, I, quite sure that I'll be able to attend that also. So if there's a third, uh, we, we just have to make sure we don't have a quorum that shows up uh, on Wednesday afternoon. So if somebody else wants to attend, just let Karina know and we'll decide who will join Mimi. Let's go to the public. Yeah, and just so you know, um, um, the deadline to post that agenda would have already happened. Right. It's before we, so maybe um, the three of us can provide feedback to the other members at the next meeting or an interim and update. Okay, we got three, three thumbs up. I'll try to okay. attend. Open so to have, the public. Uh, Sam Stivers is here and he had his hand raised first. I'm gonna let him speak, Sam, you also? Great, thanks. Um, Stivers, welcome. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, just want to follow up on, on the conversation. Um, I absolutely share Ms. Luttrell's frustration that uh, I, as the designee for the Board of Selectmen, haven't been able to actually get this thing to the finish line in the last year and a half or so. Um, and uh, I've thought on a couple of occasions that we've had agreement on this, and that has not been the case. Um, but I have recently had a conversation with Ms. Galligan that I um, debriefed uh, the town planner on, and I think there may be a, a path to the finish line here, at least for the scenic roads part of it, that I wanted to be sure that you folks uh, had on the table for consideration. Uh, I don't know if Ms. Galligan is in the audience. I don't want to put words in her mouth, but uh, I have, again, had conversation with her. Is she here um, tonight? No, but I did invite, I did send her an agenda and Lisa as well, just so they'd be in the know. Yeah, I, I saw that. Um, let me, not to put words in Ms. Gallagher's mouth, but I'll tell you what I heard from her recently and I passed along to, to Karina. Um, Karen indicated that she could be comfortable with the planning board handling the entire process for scenic roads. So any tree on a scenic road that uh, was uh, uh, 
potential for had potential for removal, if the planning board was willing to um, handle that process in terms of uh, advertising, posting the hearing as a joint hearing, and town council has opined to me in one of these office hours conversations that if the tree warden does not choose to attend a joint hearing, that's not a violation of law as long as, as the thing is posted appropriately. Um, if the planning board is, is willing to do that for scenic road trees, uh, Ms. Galligan said she is okay with that approach. And the, the issue there, as Karina has pointed out to me, is that uh, that, that means that uh, town planner or town planning department staff would be responsible for the advertising and posting of the hearings and uh, covering the cost of that as well in terms of advertising, which is a budget implication. But again, if that's something that the planning board could be comfortable with, I think that could actually handle the problem in terms of scenic roads. And, um, um, you know, again, uh, I, Galligan would have to certainly sign off on that one, but that's what I believe I heard from her recently. That still leaves a number of issues relative to non-scenic roads. And as Ms. Luttrell commented, uh, there's broad latitude, latitude in terms of what uh, is required uh, for a, a hazard or immediate danger for a tree. And I think Ms. Galligan's view that she would like to have a list of inventory of trees that need to come down that have been uh, reviewed by an arbor and if the arborist says that it should come down, then she wants to be able to do that as her staffing and budget permits uh, without hearings uh, for trees that, again, have been assessed by an arborist and recommended for, for removal. But that's another issue uh, uh, on the non-scenic side. But if, again, if, if planning board is comfortable with res taking responsibility of scenic roads, it would seem to me that that's worth investigating here as a next step. Um, as a sidebar issue, uh, I actually would be supportive of a, tr a tree bylaw to clarify these things. I think that could be helpful. But that's, again, a little longer term issue than uh, maybe we have to do right now. So that's sort of where I am. And uh, if folks are interested in that, I'd be glad to continue to pursue that with Ms. Galligan. Don, may I add something? You're, you're, you're muted, Don. Hey, I'm looking at the, at the agenda and uh, the door is open okay. for the planning board to um, say that w the, the planning department is willing to take on that, uh, you know, public hearing process, advertising and all that. But I'm not sure if our agenda item as written, um, if that goes beyond uh, the agenda for tonight to actually take a vote to take that on. So uh, maybe we'll put that on, on our next agenda to see if the planning board wants to do that. And that would give the town planner an opportunity to look at the budget to see if um, what the impact would be if we had to uh, advertise two, three, 200 uh, hearings a year, how expensive that would be with our uh, proposed budget. Go ahead, Karina. Don, could I also reinforce that it would be important if the planning board does decide to uh, pursue that direction without a vote, presumably here, just to loop back to uh, Ms. Galligan and make sure that that's what she thought she told me, because I have... Uh, been a little surprised in the past on some of this. So I think it's very important to make sure everybody's still on the same path with this. So as you do that, uh, you or I would be happy to connect with her again to confirm that that's something that she is comfortable with. So do you agree that it's not on the agenda tonight to take that vote? Um, I, I'm not the lawyer, but I think that would be prudent not to take a vote and just a, a, an indication of interest, I guess. And then we can move forward from there if you decide that it, it is something that you're wanting to pursue. So why don't we reserve the next 10 seconds for any planning board members to uh, object to that approach without taking a vote? If the board remains silent for the next 10 seconds, then I think that would be an indication. Starting your time Not starts. Not silent. <laughs> <laughs> I okay. have one issue that we're working on a policy, which unless it's adopted by the tree warden, it does not have the teeth of a bylaw. And with all the changes and uh, 
discrepancies between what's agreed on and what um, uh, the DPW superintendent pushes back on, I doubt that it's gonna be adopted by the tree warden. I also wanna point out just to piggyback that so it doesn't get lost in the weeds here, so to speak, um, that I did ask town council for an opinion on some questions and he did provide um, me and Mark and Karen uh, response that said the statutes when read together make consolidation of the hearings mandatory. If for some reason that doesn't happen, and I would suggest that either a new consolidated here or whatever, but um, then the statute says that the hearing under chapter 87 is before the tree warden. Um, and that means that either the tree warden or the duly authorized designee should be in attendance. So I can recirculate that email um, to planning board members and to Sam and to Karen um, as part of the conversation, because he is saying that tree warden attendance is required, even if the planning board handles all of it. That, I, that's it. That's good, Karina, because that's not what I thought I heard from Mr. Tallerman. So it would be good to confirm that as well. So I did ask him that specific question. His comment, I thought, was tree warden does not have to attend, but uh, he may have changed his mind or I may have misheard him. So it'd be good to make sure everybody's on the same page with that. Yeah, what happened is we got an opinion during a, a scenic road tree removal that um, I had asked uh, Council Tallerman about, and that's when he responded. Um, after he had spoken with you and Karen. Okay, thanks. Marnie, did you have your hands up? I did. I also wanted to say that I think a town bylaw has a little bit more um, teeth to it. And I think that we need more people. And, and there are people, there are people that are concerned about the scenic road and what's going on with trees being removed. Um, my only other comment was, I, I guess it's for the Board of Selectmen, but I thought our Board of Selectmen um, oversee this, this, um, the DPW. So it's within their jur jurisdiction to mandate that that happen. But that's just a sidebar comment. So um, I think we stick with a, a bylaw personally. Uh, I, I also am concerned about, like the, what the process would be to like, post on a tree and identify a tree to be whether it needs to be uh, have a hearing or not. I, I don't see us having Karina drive around every scenic road on a regular basis to identify trees or anything. I don't know if that's what the process is. I mean, I think DPW is doing it already uh, for various activities that they're doing and probably identify them that way. But um, I, 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 just want to protect Karina a little bit um, for what it could entail if we take that on. So uh, I wouldn't be in favor of that without knowing what the, the full process was and if she had the capability to, to take that on. Thanks. And I think there may be um, uh, minor, they may be um, qualifications as a tree warden. There's certain things you have to have based on your population like a 10,000 person threshold and we might just be over that threshold I'm not sure. Yeah, we are over that threshold and the DPSW position is that our tree warden does meet those qualifications. I think there is some differing opinion on that one from others but uh, that is, is DPW's position on it. Well to me what I'm hearing is the most important thing is that those in authority, those in the process need to all start pulling in the same direction. And what's the direction? The direction is what the people want. If the people want all the trees cut down on all the streets, they should speak up and say, we want all the trees cut down on all the streets. Or if they want to preserve as many trees and start planting more trees and keeping the, the town, uh, the town uh, streetscapes uh, with uh, trees, then they should speak, they, they'll have an opportunity to speak up. And those of us who are appointed or elected uh, should listen to that and uh, try to accommodate the desires of the townspeople. 
Is, was there anyone else uh, from the public? Yes. Yes. Mr. Uh, Kevin Barrington would like to speak one more time. Hi, this is uh, actually Debbie Demuria, uh, Kevin's wife, um, mm -hmm. for the CBA, but speaking as a private citizen. Um, I have a question about being a Tree City USA. Um, in the research that I've done, there's four essential elements. Um, and one of them is having a qualified tree warden. Um, yes. And I, I appreciate that you uh, mentioned the, um, the uh, population growth that we've had, that we've hit over 10,000. Um, there's quite a lot written about tree wardens. And, um, you know, once your population growth gets to 10,000, you have an additional um, uh, section under mass general law. And it's just widely recognized that the tree warden should be a qualified arborist um, with supervisory experience and credentialed. Um, and I think if we had a credentialed arborist, we wouldn't have the need to be hiring arborists from outside um, the town. Because I'm not sure that um, I mean, they might be qualified outside the town also, but they may not have the town's best interest at heart. Um, especially when we're relying on them for making decisions about cutting down the trees. Um, but the other pieces of being a Tree City USA from my understanding is that we have a, a, a declaration proclamation of Arbor Day, that there are um, $2 uh, per capita put aside in, in a budget. So I do wanna ask you about that. Um, and the final is that we have the formation of a tree board. And so my question, to you tonight is how are we meeting, you know, is that your understanding also? And how are we meeting those criteria, especially the $2 per capita? Because I think maybe that helps with um, the cost of having to advertise for quarterly tree boards or something like this or hearings. Um, but what about a tree board? My understanding of a, a tree board is that it's, um, you know, it could be the planning board. I don't really know, but I want, was wanted to get your, your opinion on that. I, I think it would be a good idea because it would ensure that not one person in town changes the look and character of the town. And my opinion is that's what's happening right now with the DPW and the tree warden that's reporting to the DPW. When I look around town and I see the trees that have been cut, especially these ones that have been topped because the DPW is trying to improve sight line and things like this, this isn't at all what people in town have voted for either by becoming a Tree City USA or when they've shown up at the tree hearings that you know have been held recently. Um, and so I would say, I think we really do need a tree board um, but I am interested to hear what you have to say too. Um, I was myself and the town planner did quite a bit of research on the tree city. Uh, and in my past life, um, was heavily involved in tree city and another facility and other, uh, municipality. So, but, uh, Sarah, you've been, doing Tree City the last couple of years and assuring that we meet those four criteria and the rules within those criteria um, usually say uh, something like tree warden or authorized a, a person appointed. Right. Uh, and then the $2 per person um, includes the co includes uh, the um, cost of removing the trees. And that's where, our, that's where our biggest uh, dollar cost has always been, is to cut them down. There has, there has been some plantings, but uh, go ahead. If, if you wanna go, go on, you, you, you're closer to it now than, than anyone, Sarah. 
Sure, yeah. Um, so I definitely ensure that the application gets submitted. Um, obviously, it's the reviewing board of Tree City who um, certifies us. So, you know, everything that I've provided for the past two years um, has been reviewed and um, thought upon favorably, which is why we uh, received that designation. In terms of the tree board requirement, it's either tree board or a tree warden and department who, you know, takes the lead um, on that. So you don't necessarily have to have a board, just that you have a designee um, and a department that's taking the lead. And in terms of the per capita expenditure, um, Don is correct when he says, um, you know, it's, it's $2 uh, per person per capita, but that is, uh, can be spent sort of kind of however um, the town sees fit, you know, or at the town's discretion. And yes, unfortunately, um, in most recent years, uh, in Southboro that has been spent on removal uh, versus planting. So some things to think about. I wanna make sure that we don't drift too far from the agenda item. We're starting to get into a Tree City uh, discussion, um, which is fine, but um, and it, it is definitely part of the, the um, discussion here with the policy, but I, I just don't wanna get drifted and drift off into uh, just Tree City stuff. Were you all, were you all set? I, I'm, I'm all set. <laughs> Anyone else? So uh, I guess it's agreed we will have an agenda item on January 10th to um, expand on this discussion. And uh, maybe uh, that agenda item will reflect uh, what we'll be discussing on Wednesday with town council. If nothing else on that, we can move on to the next agenda item, which is other business properly before the board planners report, Karina. All right. Just quickly. Thanks. All right, just want to bring your attention to um, the 2022 annual town meeting warrant article deadline. Um, the final form um, needs to be into the Board of Selectmen for the first week of February, and the warrant closes uh, January 4th, 2022. Um, just in talking about the tree bylaw and such, so we have to just keep that um, in the back of our heads. And Don, um, it's my understanding that this isn't a zoning amendment, right? This would be in the code outside of zoning, which would not require a planning board public hearing, the tree bylaw. Um, I, yeah, I was thinking of that. Uh, and Mimi, you referenced uh, the, when we did the tree city and we created the new, a new section in the code called trees. Uh, that's outside of- yeah. It's 53? 153. 153, outside of zoning. It's yeah. outside of zoning, but it's a, um, it would be a, uh, a code uh, Warren article um, that have to be a public hearing for it, I think. I don't know, we have to look into it. I'll have to check, well, yeah, because yeah. I don't think we did one for the tree, for the 153. I could be mistaken, I'll check. So don't all placeholders for the warrant have to be in by like this week? We already have a placeholder. Oh, for this? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. We put that in right away. It can just be a generic placeholder for now. Karina, can you clarify that the warrant closes on January 4th? Uh, let me see. Uh, To end that the warrant for 2022 annual town meeting will close on January 4th, 2022. For those of you submitting placeholders, please keep in mind that the articles will need to be final form for the first week in February in order to have time for council review, printing, and posting. Um, I received that on December 3rd from um, town administrator. 
There is a possibility that the town meeting will be moved to later. Okay. Cool. So would you like me to continue? Um, the uh, Southboro Center Historic District um, got the nomination has been voted eligible by the state review board. We received a letter just letting the planning board know um, it had been nominated and now um, it's voted eligible. Then, um, as you know, MBTA communities is another uh, bylaw that the town will have to be working on and Shop C is kind of spearheading that. Um, and they'll be providing some guidance because it's been a little bit harrowing for a lot of towns, um, supposedly here in December sometime. So surely by January, we'll get some guidance from the Department of Housing and Community Development on that. Um, and that's all I have. Any questions, comments? Next item would be the approval of the minutes, October 18th, November 1st, November 15th, December 2nd. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion we approve the meeting minutes from October 18th, 2021 as written. Second. Motion's been made and seconded. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor, Morris, yes. Mills, yes. Stan, yes. Patrol, yes. Julian, yes. Next minutes are November 1st. Mr. Chairman, make a motion we approve the meeting minutes from November 1st, 2021, as written. Second. Motion been made and second. And any discussion? I'm looking at you, Kate. <laughs> no comments? Motion been made and second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Morris, yes. Mills, yes. Stein, yes. Patrol, yes. Julian, yes. Two for two, Kate. November 15th. So I wasn't there, but I'll still make the motion if everyone's okay with it. Proceed. Uh, Mr. Chairman, make a motion. We uh, approve the meeting minutes from November 15th, 2021, as written. Second. Motions are made and seconded. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor, Morris, yes. Mills, yes. Stein, yes. Patrol, yes. Julian, yes. And December 2nd. Mr. Chairman, make a motion we approve the meeting minutes from December 2nd, 2021, as written. Second, but I'm going to abstain since I wasn't there. Anyone else want a second just for? Second. Motion's been made and seconded. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor, Morris, yes. Mills, yes. Abstention by Stein. Luttrell, yes. And yes, nice job, Kate. Thank you. Oh, and just before you adjourn, I, I forgot a major thing in my planner's report. Um, as you all know, um, Colleen Stanfield, Stansfield was appointed um, to the business administrator position and um, she will be starting next Wednesday, uh, December 22nd. Um, so if you have a chance to stop by and say hi, welcome her, et cetera. And um, Sarah will, for now, was gonna keep helping with shop seat and the master plan facilitate those meetings and that uh, strategic plan that we have a grant for. Um, but we'll solidify all that as we go forward over the next week. What a great team. Really? Yeah. Thanks. Excellent. Great plan. Congratulations, you guys. <laughs> thanks, Sarah. And thanks for keeping up the good work. Mr. Mills, I don't think we're going to have another meeting before Christmas. Is there a, a, a motion that you would? Uh... Yeah, I'd like to make a motion that the planning board and staff have a very Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays and a happy new year and um, regret that we can't all be together to uh, <coughs> uh, spread the joy. Second, second. Motion's motion. been made and seconded. Remember, if this, it's important that this uh, passes, otherwise it won't be good. 
Uh, <laughs> motion's been made and seconded. Any discussion? Should we all, all go get a glass of wine? Water? <laughs> you mean for the Zoom? <laughs> Water. Cheers. Water. Cheers. Motion's been made and seconded. Any discussion? Are we not all in favor? Morris, yes. Mills emphatically, yes. Stein, yes. Latrell, yes. Lehan, yes. Happy holidays. Merry Christmas. Mr. Mills. Motion to adjourn. Second. Motion's been made and seconded. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor, Morris, yes. Mills, yes. Stein, yes. Latrell, yes. Lehan, yes. Feel Thanks, better, 